In the previous lesson, we were speaking about magnetic flux and what magnetic flux is, or what we said, was that it's, it's almost the amount of magnetism that a certain object is feeling. So a very silly example, for example, would be something like this. If I have this square and let's say we've got, let's say that that square is just like a loop and let's say we've, we put it inside a magnetic field. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a whole lot of X's and what these X's represent is magnetic lines. And because I'm using an X, what that means is that those magnetic lines are going into the page or into the screen. Okay, but if I used little dots like this, then it would mean that they are coming out of the screen towards us. So a basic way to think about this is that the magnetic flux for this object would be four. Why? Because there are four lines going through that object. So magnetic flux just means how much magnetism is the object so the object in this example would be the square loop, how much magnetism is that object experiencing or collecting? And in the previous lesson, we also said that to work it out, you're going to use this formula over here, where this symbol over here stands for magnetic flux, and its unit is called the Weber. Then we said that B is the magnetic strength or the magnetic field strength. Your teacher or some textbooks might call it the magnetic field density. Okay, so either strength or density and that's measured in Tesla. Then A is the area, which would always be me measured in meters squared. And then the theta part, or the theta, is the angle. Oh no, I shouldn't put a line like that. Like that. That is the angle between the magnetic field and the normal. But I'm going to explain all of this now. So. That's just a bit of a recap from the previous lesson. Okay, so if you've got all of that, then let's practice. So, they tell us here that we've got an object that has an area of four meters squared, the magnetic field strength is five, and theta is zero. And they want us to determine the magnetic flux. So we use our formula, and we just fill everything in. It's gonna be quite easy for now. So the magnetic field strength is the five Teslas, so we say five. The area is four, and theta is zero, so we say cos zero. And if you put that on the calculator, you're gonna get 20, and then we'll say 20 Weber, because the unit of magnetic flux is Weber. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Here's another one. So now they give us the shape as a circle. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a little circle. They tell us that the radius is four, so that's from the center to over there. And the magnetic field strength is five, and theta is zero. So we can use our formula again, where we know this one. Area we don't have at the moment, but we know that the area of a circle is pi radius squared. So Kevin, are you telling me that we're gonna be using pi inside science? Well, yes, guys, they're not going to get too complicated about it, but they do often throw in a shape like that, okay? So just be careful or like be aware that it is going to come up. So we're going to go pi times the radius, which is 4 squared. And you can go type that in the calculator, but I'm just going to keep it in a simplified number. That'll just be 16 pi. So that's our area, 16 pi, so we have that, and then they've given us this over here. So we are good to go. So the magnetic field strength is 5, the area, I'm just going to keep that as 16 pi, I don't feel like working with all the decimals, and then cos of 0. Go ahead, type that in on the calculator, and what you would get is 2.5.
comma three three Weber. Moving on. Ooh, now they're giving us a square. <laughs> so, but everything else is the same, so we can easily work it out. We can say B times A times cos theta. And so the magnetic field strength is two. The area, well, it's a square. And so we know that the side length is four. So that means all of them are four. And so we could work out the area as four times four. And so that's gonna be 16. Okay, so I'm gonna put a 16 there. And then I'm gonna say cos zero. So that's a zero. And that's gonna give us 32 Weber. Then they might not give you or they might show you a drawing like this, so they don't give you theta. Now be careful guys, I could be trying to trick you over there with the 70 degrees. If you understood the previous lesson, you would know what I'm getting at right now. So here we need to work out the magnetic flux again, so we're going to use our formula. And so they tell us that the magnetic field is 2, so we know this one. It's a square, and the side lengths are 4. So you must imagine that we are looking at this from the side. So the square is probably over here. And these magnetic field lines are busy going through that square. So we're looking at it from the side. And please don't ask me to draw 3D. I, I battle with drawing. So yes. So we know that the area is going to be 4 times 4. Because it's still a square. So we have that. And then theta. Now guys, most of you are probably going to think that it's 70. But I've done this on purpose just to try to show you how it works. Remember what we said? We said that theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the normal. So let's find the normal first. What is a normal? A normal is a 90 degree line. It must always be 90 degrees to the object. So we take the square and we draw a line going at 90 degrees to that square. So something like this. See that? Because that's 90 degrees. That is what a normal is. Now we need to find the angle between the magnetic field, which is the red line, and the normal, which is the black line. And so some of you might say, yeah, but technically we could measure this whole angle here. Yes, that's correct, but we want the acute angle, the smallest angle. And so it's this one over here. And so we know that this angle would therefore be 20 degrees. So don't let them catch you out like that in the exams, guys. So here we've got B, which is going to be the magnetic field strength, which is 2. The area would be 16, because it's 4 times 4, cos of 20 degrees. Okay, type it in on the calculator. And that'll give you 30.07 Weber. What we have now is a circle, and we've got all these X's. Now what those X's represent is magnetic field lines going into the page. So now we're looking at the question from a different angle. We're now looking at it from behind the loop, and all these magnetic field lines are busy going into that page, or into the page, okay? If it was a circle with little dots, then that represents lines that are coming out of the page towards us. Okay, and so we're going to measure the magnetic flux, and so we're going to go use our formula, which by now you guys are probably quite comfortable with, and so B is the strength, which is 2, A is the area, so it's a circle once again, so that's pi r squared, which is pi times 2 squared, and that's just going to give you 4 pi, so I'm going to fill this in as 4 pi. Now for cos theta, we will assume that the lines are going perfectly straight. So cos theta will be cos zero. Why do I say that? Because if you had to um, take this loop and draw a normal to that loop, that means it would be 90 degrees to that loop. So it would be a line that is going out of the page or into the page. Then the magnetic field lines are also going into and out of the page. And so the angle would be zero. Let me draw the circle from the side. Okay, so let's say we're looking at it from the side, it would look like that. Then we know that the magnetic field lines are busy going into the circle. And if we had to draw a normal line, that would also go into the circle. And so we can see that 
both the normal and the magnetic field lines are going in the same direction and so that is an angle of zero and so over here we would say cos zero and so if you work that out you're gonna get 25.13 Weaver I'm gonna quickly add in one more question okay so here's the last question it looks a bit weird but what we have here is a square so if I had to draw it in like 3d it would look something like that okay so imagine we are looking at the square from the side and then what we have is we've got magnetic field lines with X's so they're going into the page but what you should notice is that none of those magnetic field lines would actually go through the square because if I had to try to draw the square it looks something like your something like that guys we're drawing it in we're drawing it from the side okay and so not, those lines are gonna go right past the square they're not gonna go through the square and so what we should expect is that the magnetic flux should be zero but let's see why because if we use our formula we know uh, the strength it's two we can easily work out the area it's a square then cos theta now cos theta is always the angle I'm gonna write this down because it's so important it's the angle between the magnetic field and the normal so let's draw the normal the normal always goes at 90 degrees to the loop so if this is our little square then yeah then the the the, mag, the normal would go like this at 90 degrees to that but the magnetic field lines are going into the page if I had to draw this from the top I'm gonna to quickly draw a top view it would look like this okay I hope that that makes sense so I've taken the shape and I've drawn it so this is from the side this one over here is a side view then I've drawn it from the top and so each of these magnetic field lines are going into the page so if you look at it from the top you would see the lines going like that and then the normal would look like this blue one now if you look at the angle between each of the normal line or the normal line in each of those magnetic fields you would see that that angle is zero and so you would say two times by four which is the area of a square two times two and then you would say cos of 90 degrees and the cos of 90 degrees is zero and so it's going to cause this whole thing to become zero um, and what that means is that these lines are not going through the square they're going next to the square but they're not going through the square I hope that that makes sense guys thank you very much for joining this lesson